Rabbi Reuven Vershevsky's story is one of heroism, courage, faith and resilience in the face of extreme hardship and unrelenting challenges. Hear him describe how he survived behind the Iron Curtain and emerged with his connection to Hashem and his Torah stronger than ever. The uh, general attitude in Russia, among the people in Russia at that time, was that every religious person is uh, a crazy, is mentally unstable or something. Uh, but there were a lot of people that were interested and a lot of people that uh, the same way I was drawn into into it, I was pulled into it by uh, some inner uh, interest. I was anxious to to find out. I was uh, I needed the answers. I was searching for for answers. I was searching for the meaning of uh, Jew Judaism Yiddishkeit. Uh, there were a lot of people around me with the same uh, same beginning, not necessarily bringing them to Shmiras, Torah, Mitzvahs. Uh, most people had interest, and then they they weren't they weren't ready to say base after saying Aleph. They had uh, the interest, but they didn't start. Uh, being Shemer Torah Mitzvahs. But uh, the majority in, in, in pe people in Russia, they looked at religious people as uh, crazy or, or Nebuch, Nebuch people. Uh, a lot of people asked me, what happened to your life? What, 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 what disaster, what, what unfortunate uh, event happened in your life that you became religious? And the fact is, it's just opposite. I had a very happy childhood and very warm and loving family. And I, Baruch Hashem, I never had any, any disasters in my life that would bring me to, to, to uh, being religious. Just opposite. I was, I was happy and I was... Uh, reading a lot and I was I had answers I I'm, I'm sorry I had questions that I I wanted answers I was searching for for information the problem was that once you become Shomer Torah Mitzvahs at the age of 17 and I, my first visit to shul was when I was 14 like I said in, in seventh grade uh, and then it took three years uh, of my way between the first visit to the bris, let's say. Uh, and I, I had a bris when I was 17. When you become religious when you're 17, you have a big problem. Uh, you need to get a ptur. Uh, from army draft every person every young male at the age of 17 supposed to be or 18 if he is still in school when he is 17 then after uh, graduating from school if if you go into university then either university is uh, has uh, military studies and then you become a uh, lieutenant at the completion of your university and when you get your degree you also get a lieutenant's uh, rank uh, you only serve three months as a lieutenant as a, as a cadet uh, but if you don't uh, if you're not admitted into uh, higher education into college into university or you expelled from there then you would draft it into into army and Russian army was not a place for a, 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 a Yiddish kind 
a, a religious person uh, to be. And it was, was uh, I'm not going to talk about what, what it is uh, like today, but was what it was uh, a Soviet army. And I knew about some people. I had a close friend who was in the army when he kept his tefillin there and what, what he went through being a Jew, a religious Jew in the army, nobody wanted that kind of experience. So the whole system was once you get, you become Shomer Torah Mitzvahs, you need to look for a way to not to be drafted in the army. Uh, when I was expelled from university, also for religious activities, uh, but it's a long story, it's, it's a story by itself, how I was expelled from university. One, once I was expelled, I needed uh, uh, a ptur from, from uh, army draft. At in coincided with my marriage, I got married first, and I already I had a subpoena to, to, to come to the army draft office on a certain date, and I waited till end of Shavu Brachas and then Pesach immediately. Right after Pesach, I had to do something not to be drafted into army. Uh, the first step is that my mother had to go to a psychiatrist and tell psychiatrist that her son became religious. Right away, without asking any other questions, bring the son in. Uh, next day she brings me with her and a uh, psychiatrist asks me questions and uh, I didn't have to in invent anything uh, that I hear voices or I see uh, hallucinations, nothing. No, Shakir, I just explained that I feel I want to live the life of a religious Jew the same as 300 years ago. That was enough. Meshugana. That was that was the enough uh, to write that I am uh, I have schizophrenia. The only thing I had to act. Uh, my friends told me it's a very good idea if you, while talking to a psychiatrist, when uh, the doctor asks you questions. You don't ask. You don't answer questions right away. You don't volunteer answers. You don't. Uh, you kind of you in yourself uh, try to hazer mishnayas by heart. So that was the only thing I, I I acted out. But the system was that just visits to local psychiatrist is not enough to get uh, exception. Yes, to get. Uh, papers uh, for the army uh, office, for the draft office. I had to be hospitalized for uh, two weeks into a uh, facility, into a hospital, mental hospital. So right after Pesach, I had to go to, to the hospital and to, to, to be admitted into the hospital. Uh, so I spent two weeks in a real uh, psychiatric ward, Moscow psychiatric ward number 13. I had uh, all the Meshugoyim around me, some, some fake Meshugoyim for the same reason, not to be drafted in the army, some that were already in the army and wanted to, uh, to get out, uh, faking different uh, mental disorders, and half of them real real Mishugoyim. Um My wife brought me my Sforim uh, into the hospital and uh, she would bring me to eat. 
uh, and we had a rope system that I would uh, use a rope to take the food into into my room from outside um, all the uh, inmates uh, had to work for a couple of hours was the, the work therapy and I was sitting in, on my bed and learning Hayodam uh, a doctor uh, she was uh, alcoholic a woman alcoholic uh, she came in and she started screaming at me that everyone at work Rzhubski why are you not working I said doctor I am working if you noticed I'm learning Torah I am working she left right away and then the nurse comes and she says the doctor calls you into the office uh, I followed her to the doctor's office and uh, doctor the chief of that uh, section she said you religious Jew I said yes and you put in the morning you put those boxes on the head and on the, on the arm I said yes she said listen I come to this office eight o'clock here is the key to my office make sure you do it before eight o'clock in this office lock the door behind you do your prayers in my office with the door locked and leave the office before I come here and that's what I did I had I had uh, a key to the chief uh, doctor's office and I davened there every morning between seven and eight and I had an opportunity even to read my file because all the files were in her office and um, that was uh, I was very comfortable there with my sforim with the kosher food uh, that I pulled with the rope uh, from the window um, and with the place to, to, to daven um, and they wrote the time uh, I have uh, uh, schizophrenia uh, until one day one of the last days of two weeks uh, a big professor came to the hospital with 30 students from uh, medical school that professor had to show how to interview mentally ill person in hospital interview and guess who was chosen chosen for as, as a model model Meshuganer? me uh, the doctor had a very classical Jewish name first name patronymic and last name and he looked very Jewish uh, something like uh, Israel Davidovich Rapaport with a very Jewish face and there was a big auditorium big big room with a desk for a doctor a chair for me and chairs for 30 students in white coats I was seated there at the, at the, uh, at the desk and professor started started interviewing me one of the first questions all the psychiatrists uh, ask if I had a family history of mental disorders any mental cases in the family grandfathers grandmothers great grandfathers and I said no and he moves on into the interview and uh, one of the questions he asks me if I understand that my religiousness is what brought me to this hospital if I understand that 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 uh, shaykhus, that connection between me being religious and be me being in mental hospital and I said and before like I said I was I was saying Mishnayas in my head and, and moving lips and not answering some 
questions I answered, some questions I ignored, some questions um, it took me time to answer. And once he answered, he, he asked that question, I said, oh, doctor, I have to correct myself. And he, professor, and all the students moved forward because it was a change in attitude. Before I was very passive, uh, and here I volunteer some information. I say I, I have to correct myself. And they all moved forward, looking at me. And I said, doctor, you asked me about uh, family history. I have to admit, if you're connecting, if you're putting uh, a, a connection between me, my religiousness, and me being in this facility, I have to admit that all my ancestors, all of them, and all of your ancestors had the same problem. And the students started laughing. It took a minute for a professor to start laughing. But he also started laughing. The problem was that he crossed out the word schizophrenia on my file. And then I got scared I wasn't wasn't a joke for me the whole reason I'm here is to get that that word schizophrenia and he's just crossed it out because of my joke but Baruch Hashem he crossed out schizophrenia and he wrote above that uh, schizophrenic psychopath so instead of being a schizophrenic I I, I was I was uh, promoted to schizophrenic psychopath. And that was the end of that, that part. I got my, my uh, papers and I was excused from army draft as a schizophrenic psychopath. <laughs>